What's up everyone, my name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this bass. So this is bass Plasma 1 that comes in the Essentials for Serum Volume 2 from Ghost Hack and this is a really interesting sound. A lot of which comes from the wavetable because we have a couple of these wavetables included in the pack, these hyperpulse wavetables. There's two of them and this is just a fraction of the kind of tones that you can get from really exploiting these wavetables. In this new serum I can just play you kind of what the table sounds like on its own. It's a really weird sort of blend of a detune. It's like mixed of mix of square waves and saw waves and a bunch of weird stuff. And the fun part is when you take something like this, you can stop it anywhere. And you have kind of a harsh digital sound. And when you're creating sounds, especially when you're just doing sound design on your own, just from scratch, it's very nice to find a tonality from a wavetable that you enjoy. Maybe not just something basic, but if you find a wavetable and you find a really pleasant tonality, like let's say I really like that one, then you can go about creating a sound that's thick and fat and rich just from that tonality. And then obviously with wavetables such as these, you can scoot it around to find the best spot. But that's kind of what I did when uh, originally making this sound. I found the good spots in the wavetable, and it is being controlled by LFO1 right here, which is doing this square shape, and it's kind of moving the wavetable around. There is another thing that's sort of moving this wavetable around though, and this is LFO2 doing a little slide up, and you can see it kind of repeating. This is just to add a little bit more movement. You can see I'm moving the wavetable around a little bit more right here. And that just sort of adds to its general movement. Apart from that, the other thing that you're hearing is the volume, uh, the level of oscillator A right here going up and down all the way with LFO3, which is uh, this shape. But it's not staying at a consistent speed. You can hear it sort of speeding up and slowing down. That's because I set it right here on half step, but I have yet another LFO right here, LFO4. That is going up and down because it is routed to LFO 3's speed. And you can do that in the matrix right here. You see if I find LFO 4 right here, and I selected LFO 3 rate under the LFOs, and I selected just this amount right here, for, so it sort of just goes back and forth and I can create a shape to kind of repeat. You can see if I brought this in the middle, which that actually sounds kind of nice. I think I'll leave it like that just for this tutorial so you can hear the different speeds. Now I know that was kind of a lot of LFO modulation all at once right at the beginning, but the good news is these are all the LFOs that we're going to be working with in this preset. All the other things are just going to be between one of these four LFOs or some of the macros, but those are very simple. After that, you can hear oscillator B. This is simply providing just some backup power through this BSOD square right here. And it's just going up and down to the level with this. This gives it a more detuned sound and also gives it more power in the low and mid ranges. A little more crunch as well. After that, we'll throw a bit of noise on there. Just flip this on and you can see this level is being modulated just a little bit with LFO3 right here. And I went into the analog and just chose ARP white. So you can hear some of that noisy texture just sitting right on top there. It sounds kind of nice. It is a little loud, but it's gonna come down when we add this filter. Now the filter is a bandpass 24. It's a pretty strong filter, but this is what's gonna create the vowel motion. And I have both A, B, and the noise running through this. And LFO3 is just doing this with the cutoff going back and forth. I have a little bit of resonance, uh, the fat's up, but I have a lot of drive. So we're getting a big peak here with this filter. And this is what it sounds like. I really just reined in everything for this one and really accentuated that vowel, which is all right because when you're doing sound design, don't be afraid to cut things out. If you really want to cut things out to emphasize something, you can always multiband compress, EQ, and distort some frequencies back in later. But while we were speaking of vowel, I can go ahead and talk to you about this macro right here. This vowel knob is going back and forth like this. If you uh, throw the macro onto this knob and it doesn't have this sort of double-sided bipolar action, all you have to 
do is hit shift alt and click like if i hit it now boom now it's unipolar and then do it again boom it's bipolar so that's another little handy trick to note when you're doing your sound design and just while we're on the macros i have this macro right here controlling the table this is going up 48 like this so we have a bunch of things on the table actually this is like the third thing on the table but the table makes such a difference because every single little bit of this wave table sounds just a little bit different actually it sounds a lot different it's like a whole new sound and so you can get a lot of different results by moving this table knob around also there is an lfo controlling the speed of lfo3 right here lfo4 is controlling the speed but i also wanted to add this to uh, the lfo rate as well just so you have even more control over it so i just left it uh, just around right there and now that pretty much covers everything in the front, next up, we're gonna go right to the effects section. Keep in mind that the sound has no post-processing in FL Studio or anything else. This is all just a serum sound. So first off, we're gonna throw a phaser on here, and this is going to kind of manipulate the vowel a little more. It's not particularly noticeable, but if I can remember, I'll try to flip it on and off at the end once we're done with the sound so you can kind of hear what it does to manipulate the vowel. Uh, I have LFO3 controlling the feedback right here, which is basically gonna be how strong the phaser is. It's not quite the mix, but what this phaser does, it's almost like an EQ. It has like a bunch of peaks moving around, peaks and dips in the spectrum. And this is just making those peaks and valleys, you know, more prominent or less prominent. So that's going back and forth with that. And then LFO2, we're controlling the frequency here of these peaks and valleys because we have the rate all the way down so we're basically using this like just a really strangely shaped filter and uh, the depths down as well so it doesn't have any side information it's all just a mono it's just a mono thing and then the frequency is being moved with this sort of going up shape right here that we used on the wavetable and it just accentuates the vowel and the beginning of the sound a little more <laughs> After that, multiband compression to really bring back those harmonics. You can see I'm, I'm slamming it a decently hard through here. But it makes worlds of difference. I really wish Serum would add just another multiband compressor in here because I would totally use it. Next up, there is a distortion, which is a little bit of downsampling. Now, this can be very handy, especially when you're using uh, bandpass filters and low pass filters on your sounds because it can bring back a little bit of crispy, sort of ringing high end. You can hear and see that there isn't too much very high end going on here. So with this down sample, you can add a little bit of crispiness. And just sort of opens it up a little bit more. So I enjoy adding that kind of bit crushing down sampling to, you know, bases such as these. If they already have a lot of high end, don't do it, but this one needed it. Next in line, we have hyper dimension. I'm using a little bit of the hyper here. I just kept it on four voices. I really think I just turned up the mix a little bit. It's just on 20%. For this, I brought the size down and the mix is also at zero, but this is being controlled by this LFO3 right here. Because if I left the mix up all the way, like right here, and then I can just bypass this to sh just to show you. I was getting artifacts that I didn't really much like. I didn't like hearing it so wide down at the bottom. So I brought it down and added this modulation just to keep it stereo, but kind of tighten the stereo up a little bit and not get much, get, not get many artifacts from this dimension expanding. I like to do that on sounds that are kind of whipping back and forth pretty quickly. It helps keep them cleaner. But after that, we have a flanger. Uh, there's really not much going on here. I just have the rate at normal, the depths all the way up, feedbacks in the middle. This is just kind of just flanging around a little bit and creating a little bit of variation. Each time you press down the note, it's really hard to hear and it's not even necessary, but I like to do it to my sounds just to add a little more, a little more background character. Next up, we have a chorus. This is just a really tight chorus. If I turn the mix all the way up, you can see where everything is low rate, low delays, the depth's not all the way up, you know, not a high feedback. I'm also just rolling off the lows with this high pass filter right here. You can click it, it goes from a low pass filter to a high pass filter. I'm just mixing it in. Just for a little more stereo effect to make it a bit thicker. After that, we have an EQ that's doing this. I have this is essentially just a high pass filter, what I'm doing right here. It's being modulated by LFO3, but it's going back and forth with a little bit of Q factor. So we got a bump here to 
ex accentuate the vowel even more because there was a lot of low frequencies brought out by this multiband compressor that sounded a little flat and a little dry, even though it sounded good, but they, there wasn't enough movement. So I added that and there also was not quite enough high end. So I also added a little bit of that with this shelf EQ right here. You can see how I'm modulating the gain. It's up a little bit and then I have the modulation of LFO3. Uh, pretty much no Q factor. I didn't want any peaks in this one. I just wanted the high end to get boosted more as the sound goes up and down. And this works out good because you can see a visual of exactly what's happening right here. After that, there is this delay where I'm adding just a little bit of metallicness. It's not that noticeable, but you can notice it sort of when I turn the mix up. It's just a little bit of stereo sort of metal sound because I have this on ping pong and I brought the filter all the way up so it's not filtering the sound at all. But I brought these time variables very low and you got to make sure they're the same otherwise it's going to sound pretty wonky. But I have the time variables very low here at 1 to 128 and then you can sort of bring the feedback up to make it more metallic. <laughs> I like them a little tighter like that, and then I can bring this down just to mix it in slightly. It's not that noticeable, especially in a track, but I like doing it. And then finally, we have the reverb. This is a plate reverb. That's what it sounds like with just the reverb because I have the size and the pre-delay down pretty much all, yeah, it's all the way down and the width all the way up. So it's not even really properly a reverb. It's just sort of this metallic layer that I also like to add if I want to have like a really fast metallic sound that's dry. I don't want to drown it in reverb because it doesn't sound that great. <laughs> And honestly, this isn't very necessary either because I have it turned down so low. It really only gets exposed if you compress it in the post-processing stage. So especially with this reverb and delay, that's to taste. You don't even necessarily have to do that. Now that we finished the sound, let's see if you can spot the difference with the phaser on and off. I feel like the vowel is just a little bit tighter and a little bit more expressive with this phaser on. It's it's much it's much easier to hear it, you know, after all of this processing that we have in the effects chain. Also, I forgot to mention one little thing right here. I have this gritty macro, and you may be wondering what this is controlling. I forgot to mention it before. It is controlling the level of oscillator B right here, so we can control the amount of BSOD square in this mix, which will kind of make it sound grittier or less gritty. Like take this. <laughs> And we can kind of find out. I kind of like the happy medium just sitting right there, but you can do it however you want to do it. So I would say the main thing to take away from this tutorial is really examine your wavetables that you are using. There are wavetables and other very, very useful wavetables within the Essentials for Serum Presets Pack 2 from Ghost Hack. But if you find a good tonality in a wavetable that's unique and you really enjoy it, definitely exploit it and kind of milk it and just make a really good serum preset out of that. You can always make it thicker and fatter and more alive later in the post-processing, but the tonality is something that's really good to start with if you're just pulling up serum to do some sound design. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the sound and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing.